When completing a long climb, one first experiences dizziness, disorientation, and shortness of breath due to the high altitude. But once you become accustomed to the climb, your mind opens up to the tranquility of the triumph. Oftentimes, the mind is flooded with realizations that were for some reason harder to come to when you were at a lower elevation. At this moment, most of you need some realizations because right now you have some big decisions to make. Right now, I urge you, this day when you have reached the hilltop and you are deciding on next jobs, next steps, careers, further education, you would rather find purpose than a job or a career. Purpose crosses disciplines. Purpose is an essential element of you. It is the reason you are on the planet at this particular time in history. Your very existence is wrapped up in the things you are here to fulfill. Whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. In my first New York audition for a professional play, I landed the lead role. From that play, I got my first agent. From that agent, I got an on-screen audition. It was a soap opera. I scored that role too. I felt like Mike Tyson when he first came on the scene, knocking out opponents in the first round. You very often get the script the night before and you shoot the whole episode in one day with little to no time to prepare. Once I saw the role I was playing, I found myself conflicted. A young man in his formative years with a violent streak pulled into the allure of gang involvement. Never judge the characters you play. That's what we were always taught. That's the first rule of acting. And any role played honestly can be empowering. But I was conflicted because this role seemed to be wrapped up in assumptions about us as black folk. The writing failed to search for specificity. There was barely a glimpse of positivity or talent in the character. Barely a glimpse of hope. I would have to make something out of nothing. I was conflicted. It was just my luck that after filming the first two episodes, execs of the show called me into their offices and told me how happy they were with my performance. They wanted me to be around for a long time. They said, if there was anything that I needed, just let them know. That was my opening. I decided to ask them some simple questions about the background of, of my character, questions that I felt were pertinent to the plot. Question number one. Where's my father? Well, he left when you were younger. Of course. Okay. Question number two. In this script, it alluded to my mother not being equipped to operate as a good parent. So why exactly would my little brother and I have to go into foster care? Matter of fact, he answered, well, of course, she's on the heroin. That could be real, I guess. But I didn't want to assume that's what it was. If we're around here assuming that the black characters in the show are criminals on drugs and deadbeat parents, then that would probably be stereotypical, wouldn't it? That word stereotypical lingered. I left the office. I shot the episode I had come in to shoot on that day. Probably the best one I did out of the three because I got what was bothering me off my chest on the next day. Phone call from my agent. They decided to go another way. I was let go from that job. The questions that I asked set the producers on guard and perhaps paved the way for a less stereotypical portrayal for the black actor that stepped into the role after me. As the scripture says, I planted the seed and Apollos watered it, but God kept it growing. As conflicted as I was before I lost the job, as adamant as I was about the need to speak truth to power, I found myself even more conflicted afterwards. My agents at the time told me it might be a while before I got a job acting on screen again. I'm hesitant about sending you out to some people right now because there is a stigma that you're difficult. But when you have those moments, you start to wonder if there was a better way to handle it. And if you could have handled it better, maybe you could help your family. And then before you know it, you broke. And you find yourself scraping together change just so you can ride the subway so that you can get the next job. And maybe if you could book something else, that would eclipse the feeling of doubt that's building seems like you can't pay them to hire you now. But that was fine because I never wanted to act in the first place and I definitely didn't want to be caught dead going after a fake Hollywood type thing. I'm more of a writer-director anyway, so forget their stories. I can tell my own stories. 
sometimes you need to get knocked down before you can really figure out what your fight is and how you need to fight it. Sometimes you need to feel the pain and sting of defeat to activate the real passion and purpose that God predestined inside of you. God says in Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. When I dare to challenge the system that would relegate us to victims and stereotypes with no clear historical backgrounds, no hopes or talents, when I questioned that method of portrayal, a different path opened up for me, the path to my destiny. When God has something for you, it doesn't matter who stands against it. God will move someone that's holding you back away from a door and put someone there who will open it for you. I don't know what your future is, but if you are willing to take the harder way, the more complicated one, the one with more failures at first than successes, the one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. This is your time. <laughs>